Okay, today I'm talking about a few new items from Sephora. I've got the new Say Do blush in Spicy and Chili along with their new Air Set Powder and Translucent with the powder brush. And this Sephora Collection Eyeshadow and Demanding has been making its way around social media, so I picked this up. And lastly, I saw a makeup artist use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in one of the sort of deeper tan shades as a bronzer, so I had to get it. I got the shade 6.5. We'll see how this works. Normally, I would wait until I have more items to do like a full face of new stuff, but Sephora's having their spring sale on Friday, April 1st. That's when I'll be posting my Sephora recommendations video. So just in case any of these products make that video, I wanted you to have a reference point so you could go back and see how they look on camera. This will be short and sweet, so let's jump in. got my foundation concealer and brows done if you want to know what I used you can check the description box so let's chat about the say do blushes here are the four shades that I have I decluttered the shades rosy and peachy because they were just far too orange and peach for my preference but these are are me in a nutshell we have the shade chili which is new it's a nice bright pink then we have dreamy which is a berry spicy which is this incredible brown that's almost a burnt terracotta because it's quite warm and then we have poppy which is that beautiful orangey coral if i could describe myself in four blush colors they would be these i mean a coral a burnt brown a berry and a pink those are the four colors i reach for on a regular basis i just don't like anything super peachy or orange so i'm very excited about these i'm gonna apply both of the new shades one on each cheek and let's start with the shade chili which is that beautiful pink I just like to go right in with the applicator. I think it's quite a forgiving formula. It's not like the kind of formula that's going to pick up foundation and disturb what you have underneath. It's so easy to apply just with the applicator and I have no issues. You know, unlike some stick products where you swipe them on and it removes your foundation, I never have that issue. What's interesting for me is you know that I don't really love um, super dewy, emollient, sort of wet look skin products. I've decluttered pretty much every single dewy, wet look skin product in my collection, except for the Say Do blushes. Those always stand the test of time because they have a super unique formula. It feels like a gel serum. It's not like the M Cosmetics serum blushes. They're not like the ColourPop Dew blush. Those felt so oily, and both of those formulas picked up my foundation, were really difficult to layer and build, but these don't have that issue at all. And they also don't have an oily, greasy feeling like the ColourPop and the M Cosmetics ones had, but they also don't have that kind of like sticky, tacky, balmy quality that I don't like. I don't like when I can like feel that tackiness on my cheeks. I'll apply one more dot. It honestly just feels and looks like you have really wonderful skincare on. And when I use these, I skip a highlighter. It's much more of my sort of everyday blush, like on the go, minimal makeup look kind of blush. And I am gonna apply it a little bit heavily because I want you to see the lasting power of this formula in the sense that they do fade. You know, they're an emollient, super dewy product and so they don't have the lasting power that like a powder would. So now I'm gonna go in with Spicy which is a surprisingly stunning brown. I say surprising because I feel like brands have been coming out with a lot of like terracotta mauves, burnt terracottas. This is the first one that really looks brown to me, not just like terracotta, and I really like that. I do find that a lot of kind of burnt brown shades lean very, very orange, and on me, I prefer something more classically like neutral brown or slightly warm brown in more of a red undertone. And I probably could even use this as bronzer for my skin if I wanted to. I think this is just so incredibly wearable. So that's the amount of blush I would normally use on a regular basis. I find it a little bit more understated, but just so you can see how the color does fade a little bit, I'm gonna add a bit more. This formula is what I reach for. Just when I'm like working at my desk, getting ready for a Zoom meeting, I want my skin to look nice, but I don't wanna look like I'm wearing a ton of makeup. And all in all, with the Say Do blushes, I really just enjoy the experience of applying them. You know, I like this doe foot applicator. I like that kind of gel, serum-y texture that doesn't feel oily or greasy, doesn't disturb my foundation. 
I really just think that this is one of the best blush formulas and I don't find that it's comparable to anything else I've tried. So I'm gonna keep these cheeks like this throughout the duration of the video so you can see that they do kind of fade a little bit and then at the end I'll probably just add a little bit on each cheek and even out the color. So now I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade 6.5. I swatched this at Sephora and I thought it, it might be a little too orange for me. But I saw a makeup artist use this on Instagram the other day and I was blown away by how amazing it looked on her skin. Since we're talking about Say, I'm just gonna go in with their bronzer brush, which I love. Their cream bronzer, the Sun Melt bronzer, is one of my favorites. But I just wanted to see what this formula would look like because I love the Hollywood Flawless Filter as a highlighter. That soft focus glow it gives, it's so blendable. I loved that this shade 6.5 came in a mini. It's only $15. And so I was really hoping that I would find a nice, warm bronzer with a soft focus glow. So far, so good. I actually think the shade may not be too orange, but we'll assess at the end of the video and see if it blends into my skin tone because if it doesn't look good on the rest of my face and like my neck and everything, then I won't be able to use it. So that's the Hollywood Flawless Filter on just my forehead. I'm gonna add a dot on my nose. That was a little too much. And then I'm just gonna add some on my cheekbones. I just, I'm a little worried it's just too warm, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I'm really searching for a new bronzer ever since Physicians Formula, I think like reformulated the butter bronzer, which was my favorite. Light bronze was just the perfect shade for me because it was like very, very light. And now that same shade is incredibly orange and quite dark. So please drop your recommendations in the comment section below. If you know of a powder bronzer, that's quite light and not a formula that's like super chalky nor super shimmery, let me know. I just want something that like is gonna add a little bit of warmth, but not too much. Okay, so that's the bronzer done. I'm on the fence about it, but we'll move on. Now I have the Sephora Collection Eyeshadow in the shade Demanding. Now I have the Sephora Collection Eyeshadow in the shade Demanding. I first heard about this because a couple people DM'd me and said that I would probably really like this shade and formula. And then I saw Amanda Z review it on her YouTube channel, so I was like, sold, absolutely. It's a very foiled kind of crumbly metallic formula. And it has a metallic base, but then it has some crushed pearlized pigments in there. So what I like to do is I really like to rub my finger around the pan and kind of mix that together and then I'll go in and apply it to my eyes. So that's what it looks like. Honestly, it's a little bit too light for my preferences. I like something that's a little darker that adds a little bit more dimension on my eyes. Um, but if you have my complexion, you like something that's a little bit champagne-y, then you'd probably really like this. It's a wonderful glitter topper. And next, I think I'm gonna try using it over like a deeper peach cream shadow and then using it as a glitter topper and I'll see how that goes. But for now, I'm just gonna rub my finger around like I mentioned and then I'm going to tap it on my eyelid. It can definitely create some nasty fallout. So just use like one layer on either a bare lid or something with some concealer on or eye cream or a primer and then tap. And tapping will definitely reduce the amount of fallout that you have. And I don't think this would work with a brush. I think you have to use your fingers. And now I'm just gonna blend that glitter edge. And I think you could probably put like a matte brown in the crease if you wanted it like a one and done glitter. That is what it looks like. It actually reminds me a lot of Celestial from Bodyography. It reminds me of Fractal Freesia from Phytosurgeons. Very much like a foiled kind of scattered effect, similar to what the Rowan quads do, but in a powder formula that doesn't crease. Yesterday I went in with three layers of that shadow and I ended up with glitter all down my face. So today, I'm gonna see if this holds up. I'll leave in the comment section below how this wore throughout the day if I had any glitter fallout after the fact, but I think I'm okay for now. For shits and giggles, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of a matte brown in the crease. I think I'll take this yellowy mustard matte from the M Cosmetics Da Vinci palette to kind of match that yellow gold glitter. 
Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Cause I just need a little bit of dimension. I just, I just don't like one kind of lighter color all over my lid. So I think for me, this shade is kind of a pass because I already have glitter toppers that are similar to this. I would have appreciated something that had like darker glitter or a darker base pigment so I could add a little bit more definition. But as a very affordable glittery shade and glitter topper, I think this is awesome. Shout out to that mustard shade in the M Cosmetics palette because that color makes me so happy. I'm actually just gonna go in and then take the matte brown quickly on my lower lash line, then we'll move on to the Say powder. Real quick, curling my lashes with the Shiseido curler. By the way, I did swatch this shade next to the discontinued Natasha Denona Chroma Crystal Topper in peach, and they're very, very different. Peach from Natasha Denona is much darker, much more of a peachy base pigment, kind of in the same color of this matte shadow in the crease. Um, but as you can see on my lids, the Sephora shadow is much more of like a champagne glitter. For mascara, I'm going in with the L'Oreal Age Perfect Lash Magnifying Mascara in the Easy to Remove Waterproof. I don't know why the Easy to Remove Waterproof is so hard to find right now. I think you can get it at Target, but make sure if you pick this mascara up, you get the one with this blue writing on the bottom because apparently that's the one that's the tubing formula. What I like about this is for a tubing mascara, it has just a natural bristle brush rather than like a plastic spiky wand and it also has a drier formula and I find that what that does is a it holds a curl better B it concentrates more of the product at the root of the lashes which means that I kind of look like I'm wearing eyeliner when I wear this mascara and I'll show you what I'm talking about it's not like a super wet formula that then coats you know, the root to tip of your lashes, but because it's a drier formula, I just prefer how it performs, and I do find it to be very easy to remove with warm water. See what I mean? For a tubing mascara, you get a lot of volume, and I find that that is really rare. Most tubing mascaras for me are very lengthening because they add that tube to your lash. They're very like separating as well, but I don't find that they're super volumizing. So this mascara is my current favorite. Mascara is done. And now I think you can see that the dew blush has faded a little bit, particularly the shade spicy, which is surprising. I didn't think that chili was gonna be the one to kind of stay. But now that I think about it, yesterday when I swatched all of the Say Dew blushes, chili was the one that stained my hand and none of the others did. So. Maybe that's why it's looking like it has a little bit more staying power. Because of that, I'm gonna go in and just even out each cheek. So I'm gonna add a little bit of spicy here because I do have to go about my day, have a couple work meetings, and I don't wanna look like I got different cheeks. Don't worry, I will take that down in a second so it's not so pigmented. And I'll just do chili on that side. Also, what I like about the Say Dew Blush formula is that you can very easily mix everything. Like you can see, whether you're mixing it on the back of your hand or on your cheeks, I love that they're customizable. Much more so than like a regular cream in a pan or like a stick blush. The, the emollients of the formula is just so blendable. You can kind of just create your own shades, which is really fun. Okay, so now that the color is even, I'm just gonna take the pigment down a touch. Perfect, and with these, I just skip highlighter. Okay, now let's talk about the Say Air Set Powder in Translucent. It's $30, it comes in a translucent, a medium, and a deep shade, and it's described as a weightless and translucent powder made with a unique air cream technology that sets, smooths, and diffuses for a radiant finish. I'm not much of a powder person, but I think that this is the powder I've been waiting for. I like that it comes in a slightly slimmer, compact rather than like a big chunky loose powder. Also very important in the packaging design for me, these little holes where the powder gets dispersed from are so small that barely any powder comes out, which is great because with so many other translucent powders, you tap it into the lid and there's powder everywhere. You end up with a very dry feeling face or you look cakey. With this, you really barely, barely get any out, which I love. Tappity tap tap. I tapped like five times and I only got that much powder out, which is fantastic, that's all I want. Also, shout out to Say for always making incredible brushes. I really don't feel that they get enough credit. The brushes are so soft. I love the bronzer brush. This powder brush you can use 
under your eyes, you can use it for powder, you could use this as a blush brush, highlight. So I'm just gonna first take a little bit on the areas around my nose where I'm a little oily. And I'll zoom in so you can see the texture. On my chin, and then right on my T-zone. And then one last spot for powder is kind of right under my eyes right here. But I skip that deep sort of line that I have under my eyes because I don't want that to be powdered. I just want this little like shinier spot. So there, 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 and there. I heard someone say the powder was shimmery. So let me see if I can get like a close up. Huh? Yeah, mine's not shimmery at all. I don't know what people are talking about. And then lastly, I thought that the M Cosmetics lip cushion in Van Gogh would go really nicely with this kind of like burnt brown cheek. This is my current favorite lip color. It's just the perfect reddish brown, my lips but better shade. And if you just apply it with one swipe and then blend it like that, you don't really get much of the like balminess of it, but you get a more like understated, blurred, subtle, stained lip look but I do want a little bit of that cushion and a little shine, so let's assess. So I'm looking at my mirror and I think the powder is awesome. I absolutely am gonna be using that every single day when I do my makeup. I like the glitter topper now that I paired it with a color in the crease. It's just that on its own, it was just too light for me and it was just like a glitter. Um, which isn't to say it's a bad product, it just wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be a little bit darker than that. But the formula's great. I think it was only $6 at Sephora, so can't beat that. And as long as you kind of like mix in that crushed pearl pigment and then tap it on your lid, then I don't think that you'll have much fallout. I didn't have any, not that I'm seeing right now. I love the Say Do blushes, but I do think that there's a time and a place for them. For example, like you can see, you know, it does have a dewy finish. That's the nature of the formula. So for me, it's not the kind of blush I ever wear when I'm going out at night, when I want something more long lasting. For me, it's much more of like a minimal makeup day kind of blush. Loving that mascara, loving the M Cosmetics palette, loving the M Cosmetics Van Gogh lip cushion. I think the only thing I'm unsure of is the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade 6.5. I think it's just a little more orange than I prefer. This is the only thing that I'm not sure of in this video. Please let me know your thoughts. Is that a good bronze? Is it an orange bronze? Is it too dark? Does it look just right? Because in terms of the formula using this as a bronzer, I love that kind of ugh, soft focus glow that it gives the skin. See a nice short and sweet video for today, but be on the lookout on Friday, April 1st for my Sephora recommendations video. That's when the spring sale is starting. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button. I do a pretty equal mix of like new products and then tag videos that feature old tried and true products in my collection. And if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.